It's hard to say exactly when it happened, but sometime during the past 10 years, most of us involuntarily surrendered a big chunk of our lives to computers and to other networking devices that contain computer chips. We're talking laptops, desktops, cell phones, Blackberries, PDAs, and remote controls. Anything that needs to be programmed requires technical support and can crash, die, or merely freeze. That always has a way of happening at the worst possible moment. And for most of us, there is only one solution. Get me the geeks. We are becoming slaves to our own technology. Addicted to and dependent upon all sorts of beeping, flashing gadgetry that's supposed to make our lives easier. So how do you turn the thing off? But it's become so complicated to set up, program, and fix. Most of us don't know how to do it giving rise to a multi-billion dollar service industry populated by the very people who used to be shunned in the high school cafeteria. Geeks like Robert Stevens. It takes time to read the manuals. I'm going to save you that time because I stay home on Saturday nights and read them for you. You and the rest of the geeks. There's millions of us out there across the country. Everybody, let's hear it, Geek Squad! And 12,000 of them work for Robert Stevens, the founder and chief inspector of the Geek Squad, a tech support company he founded 12 years ago while he was still in college and sold in 2002 to Best Buy. Whether his geeks are making service calls in their Volkswagen Beetles or toiling over the 4,000 frozen infected computers that pass through this facility near Louisville every day, Hello. Hi. they all wear the same uniform. Hi. White shirts, white socks, and black clip-on ties, a look Stevens borrowed from NASA engineers. It looks a little weird walking down the street because people think we're going to hand out Bibles, but when you see like 20 of us walk into a bar and start, you know, ordering beers, it looks like an FBI raid. Well, the encryption that we're speaking of here... He says the biggest complaint about tech support people is rude, egotistical behavior. And the uniform is designed to impart a dose of humility as they work their wizardry. And the wireless router is over here. There's usually some frantic civilian at the door pointing at some device in the corner that will not obey, and we've got to make sense of it. And, uh, you know, hygiene provides bonus points if I don't smell bad. I mean, literally, that was my business plan. Just be nice and fix it. Are people grateful? Oh, of course. If you look at, like, the focus groups or whatever, people will say, savior, and they saved me, and they saved my data. This stuff's irreplaceable. Your master's thesis that you've been working on for six years, that you, that you promise yourself you'll back up next week, we have saved more MBA degrees in this country than anybody. I mean, you become indispensable. Yeah, because I don't think that the pace of innovation is going to slow. I don't think people realize the Internet revolution hasn't even really started yet. A dozen years ago, when Stevens started the Geek Squad, most people used IBM computers and primitive Microsoft software. The Internet was still a novelty. Today, thousands of products and providers allow you to watch TV shows, make phone calls, download music, print color photos, people often say, and dictate letters without ever leaving your desktop. If you have the time, the patience, the aptitude, and the available brain cells to master yet another software protocol. Just the thought of learning anything new makes my head hurt. Well, that's it. David Pogue, who's authored computer books and writes a weekly technology column for the New York Times, says the revolution is still a work in progress. Microsoft made the operating system. Some company in Taiwan made the equipment. You're running software from a company in California, and now you're installing the driver for digital camera from a fourth company. You know, what are the odds that all of these are going to work flawlessly together for all 400 million people who have PCs? Zip! So what do you do? you get unhappy. You develop software rage. Yes, you need to reboot your system. Copy, SA. Anyone who's ever called a toll-free helpline knows what David Pogue is talking about. And it doesn't seem to make any difference whether you're talking to someone in Delhi or Dallas. I have spent three hours on the phone on this today, so my temper is a little bit short right now. Okay, I do apologize for your inconvenience on this, Bill. Software companies will try to convince you it's a hardware problem, and hardware companies will do the reverse. According to one survey, 29% of all callers swear at their customer service representative. 21% just scream. The rest, presumably, are too exhausted to do either. 
If uh, after our troubleshooting we determine that there's hardware failure, then we ship the part to you and then you will contact our field service team, set up an appointment for the technician to come out and they will install that part for you. Oh my God, how long does that take? All the inconvenience and stress are a hidden tax on the low, low price you initially paid for the computer. The profit margin doesn't allow for customer service. Honestly, where do you go if you can't get it to work? People buy this stuff and then they're dropped. Where do they go for help? It is this market niche that the geeks have filled. With more and more households discovering a need for tech support, they've become as valuable as a good plumber or electrician. On the low end, there are teenagers like Brandon von Koschenbar who will be happy to come over and bail you out, as long as it doesn't conflict with his shift at Starbucks. He does it all, lives right down the street, and his rates are reasonable. Small market share. Well, we work with a lot of celebrities. We work with a lot of people in the music industry. On the high end, there's Paul Oste, geek to the stars. He'll buy and install all your electronics, integrate TV, cable, DVDs, music, climate control, and lighting, See what's on CBS. Onto a single custom built remote that even okay. I could operate. All of this for just a few hundred thousand dollars. How hard is it for an average person to go into a store and buy a high def TV set and come back and work it? I would say in my client base, it'd probably be less than 5%. Show me some complicated stuff. <laughs> Pick a direction. Robert Stevens of the Geek Squad says more than a third of the wireless routers and modems purchased at Best Buy are returned because people think they're just too complicated. You know, there's the do-it-yourselfers, there's the do-it-for-me, and what we're discovering is an even bigger market of the I thought I could do it myself crowd. New York school teacher David Barkheimer, who considers himself a bit of a geek, fell into the last category. He spent three days trying to hook up his new 32-inch HDTV, plotting through menus and a manual that was almost certainly written by Korean engineers. The more I look at the manual, the more complex it seems. He finally gave up and sought professional help. It's complicated. It is complicated, more than it needs to be. Dr. Donald Norman is an uber geek, a professor at Northwestern University and one of the preeminent engineers in the country. He helped set up the technical standards for high-def television in the United States, but he had to hire a geek to set up his own TV. When people call up geeks to come and fix something or install it, a lot of them seem very apologetic for not being able to do it. Should they be apologetic? Absolutely not. No, it's not their fault. It's the damn designers of this stuff who have no understanding of real people, everyday people. Dr. Norman says the technology changes so fast and the competitive pressures are so great that products are pushed into the marketplace before engineers have had a chance to simplify them. Someone complained to me, you would need a degree, an engineering degree from MIT to work this damn thing. Well, I have an engineering degree from MIT and I couldn't work it. You could call it the revenge of the geeks. The geeks are ruling the universe. Yes, but um, it's like the Greeks used to talk about the philosopher kings. Um, geeks have no interest in power. The only power we're interested in is low power consumption and longer battery life and lower prices so we can stay up later at night. Geeks may inherit the earth, but they have no desire to rule it.